Yesterday, today. This morning, I listened to a reading of Robert Haas's impromptu poem from a September night in Waterloo Village, New Jersey, beneath the pull and sway and simmer of my backyard's maple tree, tweezing loose hairs from the arms of the keys of my sterling typewriter, which is itself an American product of enduring manufacture. It was issued, so to speak, like Haas, in 1941, a time, a social world, when malteds were coming into vogue on the main streets of small-town America, You'd see a family of four in a green Packard, top-down, pulling into park before the ice cream parlor's sidewalk filled with swarms of small boys in checked shirts and pomaded hair, clutching the promise of a little pocket money in their neighbor-loving fists. Their sisters with blue or green or yellow ribbons in their hair, dresses blowing in the cooling but still humid twilight of that spent day as Smith Corona was beginning to assemble the first of the quarter-million M1903A3 Springfield rifles they would produce during the Second World War. Though the U.S. military doesn't count, recites Haas, why put a weapon in the hands of your enemies? By conservative reckoning, 9,500 Iraqi civilians were killed during the invasion of Iraq. By conservative reckoning, 300,000 Iraqi civilians have been killed during the occupation of Iraq. A bright green key helicopters down from the maple overhead in the interstices of whose movement, if you half close your eyes, an enormous chandelier sparkles, turning. Two and a half million Iraqis have been driven from their homes and are living in exile. Two million Iraqis, having been driven from their homes by ethnic cleansing, are living in internal exile. Last night, on television, a candidate for the presidency of this country described the state of affairs as winning. In the sing-song voice and grammatical imprecision I affect when I speak to my five-year-old yellow lab, I tell him as he heaves after having too quickly gobbled six scoops of red watermelon dropped on the tile at our feet as water was boiling on the stove for green tea, I tell him, hang on, puppy, I'll get you some good cold water, because what else is there? In 1939, two years before Haas and this typewriter were produced, a Japanese scientist in Yokohama, Japan, invented the first seedless watermelons by producing a triploid hybrid a technique that would come to be improved upon and later patented by a Californian and lead to the obsolescence of the old American wives' tale that watermelon seeds implanted in the stomach would grow. And it was one year before that that Orson Welles and H.G. Wells gave their infamous CBS performance of The War of the Worlds from San Antonio, Texas. Nearly 120,000 Japanese Americans would be forcibly relocated over the course of the Second World War, following upon what H.G. Wells called the war to end all war, but our concern here is not with the past. As I walk outside with the broad, clear bowl of water slopping from lip to lip, I'm astounded by the number of houseflies whom each morning and every afternoon appear about the screen door to the backyard's porch and overgrowth of green life with plaintive little supplications. Part of me thinks that if they could, they would be praying. Each fly is about the length of your thumbnail and resembles a little typewriter with wings bumbling against the still, unfamiliar net of which their tentative consciousness assures them again and again. Walt Whitman has is asking, where are you? The smear of applause that follows comes from the hands and throats of an audience at a poetry festival which, had it taken place forty years earlier, might well have been characterized as red, its members tracked. I reach back to open the screen door, and most of the flies get caught between the screen and its now adjacent pane of glass, so I slide the door back and forth on its dry track back and forth until the last fly tumbles into the freedom it has been permitted. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Emma Goldman, Rosa Parks, recites Haas, Henry David Thoreau, where are you? I return again to the typewriter to tweeze the last hairs made to seem to symbolize a kind of longing in the breeze between the concave pedestals on which the Roman alphabet lie in ready repose, and already two more flies are caught behind the screen door. Where do they keep coming from, I wonder? They won't say no, 